system program, something like that, and they're looking at a different set of values um, related to this project, then what's really important for me and my consideration is the driveway permit. Driveway permit will be required, and in District 2, the NCDOT, um, they will look at this proposal in the TIA to, to see that it meets the standards that they have, and they may have recommendations to this greater than what the traffic impact analysis came through with, because they're looking at it merely from a safety point of view. You can see, well, you can't see, um, unless I zoom in, but they have a much, much um, longer than necessary site triangle because of the shape of this road, the alignment of this road. So they got 250 foot site triangles, so we can't build anything within here or here so people can see. Um, but both of those have to be met, especially the, the, the district engineer's review yeah. for the driveway permit, which may at this point even include a light. We don't know yet. But I want to say that the normal process in Summerfield is for a site plan to come in to get reviewed, either be approved, conditionally approved, denied. Um, and based on what happens there, it either goes forward or sits until we receive more information. If it goes forward, it goes out to the other agencies who are required to do their parts. So that would be environmental health and DOT. They come back to us. They make their recommendations. That information is communicated to the developer, which will already know this because they're communicating directly with these other groups, and they'll make those revisions to the plan. So everything that's required by law, whether it's stormwater, uh, federal law, state law, whether it's the law of the state for traffic improvements related to these type of projects and large scale commercial developments, all of those will be met by the other agencies as we have it set up in Summerfield that we don't perform this work in-house. Of course, we don't own or maintain any roads, so DOT does all that. But also relying on Guilford County to perform the services they do for us, which is for the construction plans, uh, they review that and they'll issue the building permits. Uh, whether it's the, the TIA, the traffic roadway improvements, DOT does that, it gets included in the project. Um, so then tonight, uh, what's asked of the board is to make a review of this plan and to either approve it fully, approve it conditionally, or deny it. We do not have a public hearing, we have a comment period. Those comments are certainly valid, and I think every member of the board shares those uh, concerns, and I know I do. Uh, so, but the consideration in choosing to approve, conditionally approve, or deny the site plan is based on your own assessment of the site plan. <coughs> from there. Uh, as I said, in, in the development ordinance, um, it says that the site plan shall be approved if it meets the standards and the development requirements of the ordinance. So it would have to be a failure to meet one of those standards with the new ordinance to deny the site plan. Um, the access road that was put in there to address uh, preliminary uh, issues, look at the well site, things like that, it didn't qualify as a road. It actually this qualifies as a minimal land disturbance activity, less than one acre, which does not require a permit or a plan for that activity. There's no intent or um, plan on the part of this plan that shows a road going in there. So it does not qualify as a road, and it doesn't meet that requirement that you have to have a plan to put that road in there. As I said before, the buffers, they have to be drawn on the map, and they show 25 feet or 30 feet, but they're going to be far greater than that. The limit of disturbance is just right around the area necessary to build the project out. I already spoke and addressed the pond. It's been discussed that between the engineers and came through in the site plan. We rely, I rely on our town engineer to review this and sign off on these plans when we receive that. I discussed the zoning on this, and, and then the level of service matter already. So there's nothing else I can share related to this proposed project um, to inform you better as to what what the developer proposes, what they want to do, what we're looking at at the end of the project. So which has questions of me. Um, the developer is present tonight, and the project manager uh, is also present. So. I will do my level best to answer your questions fully and completely. Um, anything I lack or um, miss out or defer to them, they can make it something. Um, I think I'd like to have uh, the developer and project manager introduce himself and make any comments that you choose to comment before I open up the floor for questions. Does that make sense? I think that's a great idea. So could they come forward and introduce yourselves? How far forward? <laughs> Sorry? How far forward? Go ahead. I'll go ahead. Thank you. 
Good evening, my name is Jason Guppy. I represent uh, America Charter Development, uh, the landowners uh, for the project. And uh, happy to, uh, to be here this evening. Um, we develop charter schools all over the country. Um, I specifically work with uh, schools here uh, on the East Coast. I'm a resident of North Carolina, my wife and family. <laughs> We also share the same concerns when we go into a project. Uh, first, pro first priority is how are we going to affect our neighbors. Um, just it's bad for business, right? If, if, if I make neighbors upset, I can't recruit students. The schools can't recruit students. Uh, so we work very hard to make sure that we address the uh, regulations in the municipalities. Uh, as you mentioned, we work reach out soon, as soon as we were uh, nearing it on site, to start working with the, the town to make sure that we are uh, in, in, in compliance with the ordinances and understand also the, the culture. Um, we have designed a facility that is uh, probably higher, definitely higher level than what most of our initial charter schools were able to afford. Uh, doing that because, again, of the location, um, not really the requirements that, that happen to meet requirements would really be designed at a higher level because of the location again wanting to meet the neighbors. Um, so with that, do you have any uh, specific questions we'd love to answer? Um, I'm Nick Luffman. I'm with Landmark Builders and we've been hired by the Charter yeah. Development yeah. for the construction yeah. of this project. So later on. Um, Chris did a really nice job of explaining what all the processes were that we had to go through. <coughs> And I understand the concerns. Um, one major one is that that there will no there's no plan for a road to go all the way through. Um, that was just to get access to the well site, but there is no plan for that. So that was one thing I wanted to make sure was that everybody heard that piece. Um, but I'd be glad to. It's, uh, you heard all the public comments, and sure. Uh, uh, you don't answer the question, we're, uh, we're going to ask you the question. So try and answer as many as you can. You, you heard about the comment about the buffers, about the, the erosion, you heard about the traffic. Uh, I guess my first question to you is, is there, is there any commitment from the DOT uh, to uh, the building of the fire turning lanes uh, that, that are, are essential for this project need to be considered? So we are working close with, uh, so the, the recommendations from the TIA of course go to MSTA first. MSTA then uh, speaks with the uh, Department of Transportation and then they hand out what they what they want us to perform. Uh, the statute is though that uh, DOT is, is responsible for handling those improvements and, um, and so we work together to, to help them make those happen. You are aware of the DOT is uh, short of funding. They uh, had 40% deficit, but they had to pay off some large settlements. So, what, what will happen? What will happen if uh, this school or the school is not available at the time the school opened? What would happen? And again, that's, that's based on uh, future uh, negotiations and, and discussions, not negotiations, but discussions with the team. We just haven't had a chance to address so them. I haven't really gotten into conversations with them on any of the school projects that I'm developing right now. We're just in that phase where we haven't gotten to the, to the table yet. I, um, I spoke with Ernie Wilson with DOT on this. He's the, the engineer responsible for reviewing the application for driveway permit. And he confirmed to me that DOT would be responsible for roadway improvements relating to school projects. So um, based on what's recommended in his analysis of the driveway permit application, what he recommends, do you to go out and construct that? So whether they hire a third party contractor to do that work or they do it in-house, it will be done by them and that's part of their responsibility. So if that firm can move, they will do it? That's, or, yeah, that's, that's, that's the problem. problem. Yeah. It's, 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 I know they're responsible for it, but they don't have money to pay for it. I, I don't think they get to escape that. If it's required as part of a school project, given the sensitivity of what's going on here, children are our most precious resource. Um, Preserve the safety, and health, and welfare. Yes, it absolutely is. Other things will fall into place before they not come out to three years. 
So just to reiterate, you do not have a confirmed committee. No, and my discussion with Mr. Wilson is that they he, he needs to confirm that they receive the TIA. The TIA, um, the routing either goes to MSTA first and then to the district engineer, or the district engineer first and then over to the MSTA sector and DOT. Um, so they need to perform the review and issue that driveway permit, and that's not yet confirmed. Any other questions on traffic? Has the uh, Summerfield Fire Department reviewed that, and what did they say about just the one entrance? Um, Chief Johnson was okay with just the one entrance. Uh, he really was interested and keen on having a left-in turn lane for westbound traffic on Oak Ridge Road. And of course, that came back as one of the recommendations of the TIA, and I don't think that's going to be something that gets uh, escaped in this project. Have that lane because, as he pointed out, and we all understand, um, if there is no left hand turn lane for westbound traffic, one car stopping, trying to make that movement, and back up traffic all the way up to Summerfield Road, which was brought up and impacted the, the functionality of that intersection. So that'll get built. We, we discussed maybe possibly creating a location for access to the pond, but that's really not going to be possible given that this is a regulated pond with these hard uh, non disturbance buffers and the fire department's capacity to draw water is, lift, is limited to 15 vertical feet of lift. So if it goes beyond that, they don't have the, the equipment to actually suck the water up and, and fill their truck. Um, one of the, somebody brought to my attention who was a firefighter that while this is a sprinkled building and there's a water tank on site for that need and perhaps also to serve the, the on-demand call need for water service. Um, discussing maybe with the developer that if the, there was a discussion to offset cost, we can get a larger water tank installed up there, maybe 20,000 gallons, understanding that there can't be a drawdown point below as necessary to sprinkle the building, but in case that there is a fire, that they can pull up there, hook up their hose right to an access point, and draw the water that they can get. Um, that's a discussion we had. Certainly not something that anybody's required to do, but something we can discuss and see if it's a If they can access the site, if there's an accident and the kid gets hurt or something, you know, getting into that site is going to be difficult. Um, it's a drop off or pickup time, so. Oh, um, possibly. However, the, um, the drive lane, it's um, so the traffic wraps this way, and then the drop off area is up here. So if they got to get in up here, they can do this backwards. You got all this area, so, so they can get in here and get out of the way and get as close as they can for EMS purposes. Uh, I'm sure that's going to have to be a consideration later down the road when the fire marshal comes through and looks at the site for the project to say, what's your evacuation plans, what's your access plans, if we need to get in and it's 7.45 in the morning and we have 200 cars on site, what do we do so we can address the fire on site? Um, in inevitably, that was part of that discussion down the road. What about uh, light intrusion uh, without lighting so it doesn't bother the neighbors? Yes, yeah, so uh, kind of Summerfield has four approved lighting fixtures. Uh, all of those meet the, the, the BUG requirements, so the backlight, uplight, and glare requirements of the dark sky ordinance and our own town night sky preservation ordinance. So the lights that will be installed um, will be fully shielded, pointing downward, uh, minimizing any uh, adjacent light, uh, not even trespass, but uh, area illuminated uh, just to when each light needs to be addressed. Uh, again, due to the location of this development project and the distance between the Lighting residential properties, there will be no light cast onto residential properties. So there'll be a curfew on the lighting as well. I mean, all the lights out by nine or ten o'clock, so it doesn't. Uh, there will be some kind of a program developed to energy and the developer and us to, to address that, so that you know, at midnight, we're not going to see the full effect of those lights as you will with, during a Christmas event where all the students and the families come out. Um, so there's just enough light to illuminate the area for safety's sake. Uh, what about? Uh, Erosion control, so we don't have another incident like that over there. The, the incident that you're referring to is a stormwater runoff yeah. matter, not an erosion control matter. Those are separate things. So, speaking to it to a stormwater control uh, perspective, um, as I said, our engineer looked at the plan, uh, excuse me, discussed what would be required with the civil site design engineer, Ryan Thompson. Ryan followed the, the, the Instructions of that discussion submitted as Brian requested. Brian's our engineer. Um, per Brian's expert analysis of this site, and he's confident what this proposed will meet the standards per federal law and state law, and of course the Jordan Lake rules. So we get that in writing then from the developer, then they're going to cause a problem. 
Well, we have our engineer's letter approving it and signing off that it's, it's going to meet the standard that's required by law. Um, their engineers designed it to that standard. So this site plan with that engineer's seal and our engineer's seal is licensed all flights. Um, is the well, is it is it cast right? It's going to be right there? It can't go to the other side or the front? As I understand, that's a proposed well location. Um, it may leave uh, some based on Heath Ward's analysis, and he is still responsible for the siting of this well. Okay. Now, um, as it relates to the drawing down of area wells, I learned today, and, and Mr. Guffey can speak to that more, but um, for a period of time after the wells drill, there will be monitoring of that well and adjacent wells in the area, the HOA well, to monitor the outputs to see how it's affecting those. And if necessary, this well may be drilled deeper um, to, to make sure that all the other wells are seeing the sufficient output to meet the needs of the residents and, of course, the school site. Did I say that accurately enough? Yeah. It's uh, Hugh Creek's rule. Yeah. <laughs> Hugh Creek's working with Gilbert County to come up with that and to make sure that it's monitored for a period after it's all uh, processed that's documented and they have to follow it in order to get approval. So, how much water is consumed daily by the school? How much is needed? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what the answer is. A plum, plumbing engineer would know that. But nice to know. <clears throat> well, with that plus two, I think Chris brought it up and it was one of my points. I think this is a good opportunity for some kind of water reclamation recycling.
uh, uh, and it's released out through like a small pipe on a long term basis. On you know, it might take over a half a week, a week for it to go out. So you don't. I mean, you get you get uh, a rent rentable event uh, that's on a four acre build upon area plus all the other uh, water that's going to run down. Uh, you need a quarter million gallons of water down. That's, that's a lot of water uh, that uh, somebody is going to be hurt with. And uh, being on your sword creek uh, myself, uh, I can tell you that in the 25 years I've been there, the, the creek is, is now twice as deep as it was when I moved there. Because, uh, everything on the other side of Summerfield Road goes toward, toward the Hall River. I mean, I, I think we need, we need to try to make sure that uh, we're not just having a deflector to spread it out. It needs to be a, a device that collects it and, and holds. Of course, it holds at least a significant quantity. Yes, the, the pond that's going to be converted will do just that. And it's designed to have that orifice, which slowly releases the water out of the pond after the pond has been able to perform what it's designed to do. <coughs> the suspended sediment and soil to settle down to the bottom and other or, um, organic elements out there, plants and whatever else, to capture surface pollutants. And there's also going to be an emergency element so that if the rainfall event is so severe and prolonged that it fills up the pond, the emergency overspill yeah. will that water in it. So that will be a rare exception. But you're right, as it's designed to work, that's exactly what's going to happen. The pond will capture that water, which is dragged into it by the uh, to drop inlets from the site into that pond and then slowly let that out. And then once it leaves, that might, then you get that diffuse flow, which is slow, low energy, uh, minimizes erosion impacts, and things like that. I mean, it's going to run into the Hanson Pond. It's going to go down to that existing um, wetland and drainage bed at the, the south end of the site. That's right. I'm not clear. Are y'all cutting all trees down at the back end of that? Like the, the, that lot is heavily wooded toward the, the where it's pointing, right? And it, are they not going to cut that or not cut that? No, no. And uh, if I may go back to this uh, drawing that showed the extent of disturbance um, for this project. Give me a moment. I can get that back up. Um, so this line right here, if you follow it. Follow my hand. That's the, the limit of disturbance for the area. So that's the limit of the area that's going to be cleared, um, graded, approved, built up for the construction of this school. Anything outside of that will not be disturbed, except for absolutely necessary, like down here, for the access, because it wasn't even developed at all preliminarily to come in and look at the well site and other conditions of the site. So this whole area where you talk about at the end of the south end will not be disturbed. So anything south of this furthest out line will not be disturbed. And all those trees, those existing trees, we want for all those as many as possible to remain. And I believe the developer wants for as many of those to remain too because it saves them money for somebody going in there and clearing that land. And in this area, given the conditions of the site, the topography, elevation changes, clearing that out would be a really bad idea for not just on site but off site. Okay, so, so no, that's going to be the extent of the land disturbance to clear that Okay. Um, my assessment.